So how do elevators work inside of Unreal Engine? Well, let's talk about it a bit. Okay. So here I have a basic elevator that came with the FPS um, FPS game pack, which is a template on um, the Epic Marketplace by SB. Very, very good set. But anyway, this was just a free bonus that came in it. And uh, I was quite interested by this, because what we have here is we have two interaction points. Okay, you can see here the big chunky buttons. Um, I don't think it will work because I don't have the interface set up for this character, but let's find out. Um, technically you should be able to kind of walk over and press this button and it will go up and down. Yeah, I don't have it set up for this character. It's set up for the character from the FPS game kit. But you get the point. Basically I've wandered over and if you know about um, interfaces, which hopefully you will, then you know I'd press a button and the lift will go up. Now how this works as we can see from here, it's very, very simple. Okay, we've got a flip flop. So you've got your interaction here, and you've got a flip flop. Now, I can change my interaction actually if I just go to my elevator viewport. And what I'll do is I'll just put a quick collision. I'll just type in col box collision, drag that up, and I'll make it 200 by 200. What about this? I'll have a head cold by 200. Okay, compile and save. Right, so if I go to my event graph now, I could also do an on overlap. Event on actor, begin overlap. And when I do that, we can just play from start. I'm not going to bother with the reverse. So just so you can see what happens. So what's going to happen is it's going to go into this timeline here. If you've never used a timeline before, that allows you to keyframe over time or adjust a value over time. That's going to go into this lerp which has basically the up value and the down value okay so this is going to interplay between the two so if this comes out as zero then basically it's going to multiply these values or blend these values against zero and then against every value between one and um, this will finally give us a new location that is basically this percentage between this one and this one and you can see elevator up at the minute is set to 800 on the z-axis and that's it that's all this elevator does okay so control save now, if I walk over to it now, you'll be able to see it work. So I'll just run onto it. There we go. And as you can see, it just goes straight up. Nothing else. Ignore that. So, great. That's working fine. Come back down here again. And probably should delete that because it's not part of this. There we go. Okay, so this means that by knowing these two simple things, okay, a timeline, and um, you know, set in the height distance using either linear interpolate or multiply. It's very, very easy to make an elevator. Everything else is really just icing. Everything else is just cake. Now, if we look at this, this is my actual lift system here. Now, I chose not to use um, a what do you call it? A um, interface at all for this. I liked the idea that it would just be you know work on proximity to the player and things like that. So let's see what's happening with the lift system. I'm just going to open that up. It'll just take a second. There we go. So this is obviously a slightly more complicated blueprint that I've built myself. So what we've got over here is we have got on component begin overlap. And this is just detecting whether or not we're outside the elevator. OK, you see these two collision boxes here. Are we outside the elevator? Are we inside the elevator? So. When we're outside the elevator, the door is going to open. Whoosh, see this? And do not activate the lift, so it's not going to go up or down. Okay, the lift door is going to open, so it's calling a function for that. It's going to play the sound of ratcheting, which is a kind of a clicking noise. I also have this here, okay, which I can put in optionally as a delay to close the doors again. Then over here, we have on component begin overlap for the inside, which is door collision three. It's going to start the process, so it's going to start making a ding sound. It's going to do some ratcheting, make the sound of clockwork. Eight seconds later, the lift's going to start going up. And it's using exactly the same system. Okay, so it's going to climb up to the top. Doors are going to open again. Doors are going to go down. So all I've done is added more complexity to the timeline, which is just here. Okay, this is just the timeline here that we saw before, just with some added complexity going to it. Timeline to control up and down. So if we look at it, okay, this is just an up and down custom event made by doing custom event, just right click custom event, 
I can call this anywhere I want in my blueprint or outside of it just by using cast T. It's doing a flip flop, so if you go into it the first time, it's going to play. If you go the second time, it's going to reverse. Lift's going to go up, lift's going to go down. And you can see here the output, I'm using a linear interpolate with the elevator up, elevator down, just like the previous one did. In my configuration, I've got very little. I've got the float double position for how far the doors should open, okay, and the delay before they close, and how far up it should go, in this case 5,000, because it goes up quite high, this one. Now, let's see how this all comes together, okay? Now, bear in mind that this lift isn't an asset that I built using 3D software. It's just built from a load of doors. That's all it is. It's some doors, some door surrounds, and a couple of bits of um, a steampunk pack, and this, which is an old animated engine, which I had in the previous pack. I always kit bash given the opportunity because it keeps things in the style that I prefer. So, play. You should see, I'll just turn it in here. Here, the motor's going, it's doing that thing. Now, it uses these grip wheels rather than the shaft, so it should have four of them really easy to get back on the security. I'll show you that in a minute. If you look inside, there's a the the trap door in the bottom, which has no controls, so you can have a full animation, so I can run things in front of that, but I can't even do it when you do that. You walk up to it. So what happens is when it gets to the top, the elevator will then open and, you know, I get out. Now everything else you're seeing here with this selected, these are just attenuations. Different levels of attenuation for the different audio that's in here. So the engine, you can hear from quite a distance so you know where, you know, the steampunk elevator is. Whereas the ratcheting and other things have a slightly smaller value and the music has a smaller value still. So what this eventually gives you is your elevator which obviously will look better if it's in, you know, a corridor or something like, you know, a narrow space going up and down. But hopefully you're getting the point, you're getting the idea of this. Anyway, that is how I constructed a more complicated elevator. What I suggest you do is you pause and have a look, go back through my thing, have a look at my blueprints that I used. Again, this is my blueprint for the elevator. I'll just quickly open that up. Okay, looks more complicated than it is. All I'm doing is calling a sequence of events, delays, and triggers, basically every time it goes up and down. So as you see, when it goes, in this case, down, okay, there's going to be, let's go back to the beginning, a delay of three seconds, down, 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 done. Take it easy, have a good one.